Hello and welcome to this video on how to create a data table with a REST data source. I'm Valentin Zigner and I'm going to show you how you can add to a page a new data table with a REST data source. Therefore, I am going to use the page I have created last time when we talked about action models. There we had one start process button where we were able to create a simple process. Let's just call it 134 for the first name, 567 for the last name, and press execute. Then we see basically here a simple task with the numbers we added before. Now, when I go back to the dashboard, we see nothing, and that is what we would like to change. So, uh, on that page model, we would like to um, add a new um, data table. So, let's just uh, select here below display the data table and drag and drop that data table uh, to our form model. Uh, for the data source, we have different options. Uh, static, which is just static information. We can either provide that or have it based on a variable. REST, which is calling a REST endpoint. Master is using global mas uh, master data and data object is referencing one of the global data objects. Now for REST, we need to provide a query URL. There are out of the box query URLs to search Elasticsearch. Therefore, I'm going to the documentation, select that developing and REST APIs. Then on the left hand side, flow will orchestrate work engage REST APIs. And then we can select platform here. Platform contains most of the Elasticsearch based REST APIs, where we then can scroll a little bit to the bottom until we have a slash search endpoint. And those are indicators for that they are going to hit Elasticsearch. So let's search here for slash search and then uh, process instances. And there we go. So that's the uh, endpoint we are looking for. And we can go ahead and uh, call that endpoint. I will just for now open it in a browser. So 8090 is my global work um, URL. Then I'm going to use platform API slash search slash process instances which is going to return to me uh, basically uh, all the data from that REST endpoint. We see in here that we have one object data and that, ob uh, that element is an array or, of, or a list of different objects. So we have in here um, all the different information, including here first name and last name, which is one, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, as we have specified it. And we can now call this endpoint inside uh, the REST API setting over here. Therefore, we can use the uh, internal or integrated endpoints.platform variable in here and say slash search slash process instances, and we specify the path data. Now, since there's pagination, we also need to specify here the size, which is the page size, which we would like to use and the start, which is going to be dollar $start. Otherwise, we are going to see an end, endless scrolling, which is always fetching the first few entries and then continuing with those. So as a next step, we can configure here that we have a refresh button if we want to, and we can configure some columns. Columns have different attributes. The model ID is basically um, the ID of this specific column inside the flowable form context. For here, it's not too important. The accessor is how it is named actually inside our REST endpoint. So that needs to be uh, the same here. And then the label is basically also uh, what the user is going to see. So let's just add here um, a few uh, ID, first name, last name maybe. Last name. Okay. We have here also the options to make them filterable, sortable, uh, add a width in case we would like to align it a little bit, add a custom CSS class, or override them with our own data component if we want to. Now let's save that. And once we have saved that, uh, we can go ahead and publish it and see how it looks like. I'm just going to refresh the page here and we see a long list of different items. So we see the first name and last name we just created. 
and the view I created before. So that's the list of our different process instances here. Until now, we can click on those. So we could go ahead and specify here a row URL. Therefore, I'm going to cheat and I'm just taking the navigation URL from our action button. And I am going to provide that row URL in here. Uh, the only thing which is different here is actually the how we can get the process ID. And then we can just use $O, which is referencing basically uh, the current object. So we have here everything available what we have in here. I'm going for ID since that's the ID of my process instance. And then I can save that, publish it, and uh, there we go. Now I have here a list of different elements in my table. So I can now click on those. Uh, it's opening right now in a new tab where I see one, three, four, five, six, seven. In case we would like to open it in the same tab, we can just say self in here, and then it should also open in the same tab. Now uh, let's just click on this one and we see now we have the same tab as with the one we have had before. Now that was the tutorial how you can create a data table to visualize information on your dashboard. You can enhance them with your own fields, everything which is available here in Flowable. Uh, ensure that when you are using those search endpoints that you have also Elasticsearch installed and configured for Flowable since those REST endpoints won't work or won't return you all variables in case you do not have Elasticsearch enabled. With that, we already reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and please feel free to check out our additional videos here. See you next time.